every person has God-given ability to function and experience more than they're presently experiencing. I am more than I realize. Come on, say that. I am more than I realize. Come on, say, I can do more than I'm doing. Potential cannot be released in isolation. In fact, you're not going to fully know how much potential that you have until you're around others who also have potential. God wants you to reach your potential, full potential. And guess what? Guess what? You're going to do it. What are you thinking about? You got to be alert. How many thought I retired? <laughs> Welcome to Answers That Work with Mike Moore. Hello, I'm Mike Moore, and welcome to Answers That Work. I'm so excited about you being present with us today. These broadcasts are based on the principle that the Bible gives answers for everyday life. In fact, God spoke to me years ago, and he said that the Word of God is the answer. So we're going to take a journey in the Word today, and I promise you, that you're going to be blessed today. Our lesson title today is, Are You Ready for More? Are you ready for more? Now, God is ready for more for you. I'm ready, but what about you? Are you ready for more? Our, our theme in this lesson is potential. We're going to be talking about, about potential, and our background text is Psalms 115. I'm going to read it to you from the Jubilee Bible, and it says, the Lord shall increase his blessing upon you more and more upon you and your sons. That's powerful. Are you ready for more? God is ready. I'm ready. But are you ready for more? We're talking about potential. So let's define our terms. There are two sides that we're going to look at this word potential. We're going to look at the natural side, and then we're going to look at the spiritual side of the word potential. The word potential from a natural standpoint means dormant or unused talents, strengths, or abilities. Talents, strengths, abilities that are dormant. They're, they're not out in the open. They're, they're not where people can be blessed. You have the talent. You have the ability. You have the capacity, but it is dormant. The spiritual side of it, and I try to approach principles from the word and, and behavior as it relates to the word from both a natural side. There should always be a practical side to what we do, but there's always a spiritual foundation. So let's look at this word potential from the spiritual side. The word potential means unrecognized callings, giftings, and supernatural anointings. Unrecognized callings, giftings, and supernatural anointings. Even as a little child, I taught Sunday school. And I, I believe that God places his hands on us even before we become an adult, even before uh, we get saved. I believe that our destiny journey, that, that, that call of God on our lives, God determined that in eternity past. So I had some giftings on my life. I really had some capacity that came from God. And even teaching Sunday school as a young adult, I had it. But it was unrecognized. In fact, I didn't fully recognize my potential until I, after I got saved. 
and began to walk with the Lord. There is, and I want you to listen to this, there is a principle of potential, and I, I'll give it to you, a law of potential. That law states that something has innate ability to be greater than itself at any given moment. Something or someone has innate ability to be greater than itself at any given moment, the law of potential. I have, I have a computer. I'm so glad that uh, my daughter is not present today for me to even mention this. Uh, my personal assistant is here, but I'm I'm gonna say it anyway. I have this I have this this computer. It's a really good computer, but my capacity. To utilize its potential is not there. You get it? You get it. I don't have to go any further than that. You understand? I have a smartphone, and that smartphone has a lot of capacity. I'm not fully utilizing uh, the capacity of the computer and the smartphone, but it has the innate ability to be greater and operate and function greater than it's presently doing, and that is true of people, every person, make a note of this, write this down, put it in, in your notebook on your phone. Listen, write this down. Every person has God-given ability to function and experience more than they're presently experiencing. Every person has the capacity to experience more than what they are presently experiencing. Now we're gonna look at Peter and we're gonna use Peter as our example today of, of how he began to, to enhance and develop his potential. But Peter started out as a fisherman by trade. I wanna read from, to, um, from the scriptures, Matthew 4, 18 through 22, and let's look at his, his background. One day, as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew throwing a net into water, for they fished for a living. They fished for a living. Jesus called out to him, come follow me and I'll show you how to fish for people. See, Jesus saw something in Peter. He saw potential. He said that if you will follow me, I'll take you beyond where you're operating right now. And the Bible says that Peter dropped his net and followed Jesus. He was a fisherman by trade, but he was more and, and he was more than he realized. Not only was he more than he realized, he could do more than he realized. And Jesus saw the potential in Peter. And he sees potential in you. So let's fast forward and let's see Peter walk in his potential. In Acts chapter 2, he preaches a sermon and 3,000 people got saved. In Acts chapter 5, his, the anointing on his life was so powerful that people were healed by his shadow. In Acts chapter 9, he raises a woman from the dead. So what am I saying? What am I saying to you? I am saying that God has more for you, that you have potential, that you are more than you realize. Think about that. In fact, say that. I am more than I realize. Come on, say that. I am more than I realize. Come on, say, I can do more than I'm doing. I can do more than I am doing. 
That's so powerful. It blesses me, and I'm trying to bless you. Mike, you are more than you realize. Mike, you can do more than you're doing. That's powerful. Powerful. I hope something is being stirred up on the inside of you because God has a wonderful plan for your life. It's beyond your imagination. That's why the scripture says that he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we could ask or think. I know you're stirred up right now and you're thinking you, you want me to get into some, show me how. How I, I can develop my potential. Show me how I, I can release my potential. I will if you beg me. I'll, I'll show you if you beg. You got to ask me. Come on, come on, come on. Ask me in the chat. Come on, ask me. I'll show you. Well, I was going to show you anyway, but I just want you to beg a little bit. Let's talk the rest of the way about five keys to realizing and releasing your potential. I'll give you an overview, and then I will walk you through each key. Five keys to realizing and releasing your potential. Number one, environment. And number two, position. Number three, exposure. Number four, time, and then number five, work, W-O-R-K, work. So let's talk about the first key to realizing and releasing your potential. Number one, environment. What, what, what do you mean, Mike, when you say environment? Environment is the place, the type of place, the surroundings where something or someone is positioned, environment, environment, environment is critical to you releasing your potential. In fact, it's critical to you discovering, realizing that you have potential because potential is like a seed. And the ground that the seed is planted in will determine whether that seed grow or whether that seed will die. Environment. Jesus said to Peter, come follow me and I'll show you how to fish for people. You fishing for fish, but I want to take you to another level. I want you to learn to fish for people. Jesus understood that hanging around the lake, fishing with other fishermen was not the environment that was critical for him walking in his full potential. That's why he said, follow me, and I'm going to put you in an environment. You ever wondered about why highly skilled five-star athletes go to places like Alabama and Ohio State and Georgia and Michigan. They, they, they go to these places, these schools, because of the environment. They may be five stars on a high school level, but they need to be in an environment that will cause them to elevate their game, to operate on a collegiate level level. Now, some people, they're not into sports, but maybe you into dance. And maybe you're on the dance team in high school, and it's your goal to be a professional dancer. Well, environment is important. I, I, I live in Birmingham, and I love my city. I love being in Birmingham. I was raised here. I love it. But Birmingham, with all of its benefits, it's not the environment to grow your skill set, to develop your gifting, to fulfill and develop this 
this career goal that you have. And in fact, I think New York would be a better environment. New York City would be a, a better environment. Environment is just important. Sometimes people have skill, they have talent, they have calling, but they're in the wrong environment. The second key to releasing your potential is position. Mike, you got to walk me through that. Position. Position has to do with being connected to others who are also fulfilling their purpose. You said, why is position so important? It is important because potential cannot be released in isolation. In fact, you're not going to fully know how much potential that you have until you're around others who also have potential. The Bible says that iron sharpers iron. Take, for example, this thing of position, a flashlight. See the flashlight in your, uh, your the flashlight has components. There's the, there's the uh, encasement of the flashlight, then there's the, the bulb uh, front of the flashlight, and then there's batteries that go into the flashlight, and then there's a switch, a little switch that you pull to release the energy in the batteries so that you can get light from the flashlight. But it's so important now that the batteries be positioned properly. You'll notice on those batteries, there's a positive and a negative on the, on the end of the battery. It is so important. You can have good batteries. You can have a good casement, good bulb. You can have uh, good batteries. You can have a great switch. But if those batteries are positioned in the wrong place, you will never get light from the flashlight. Position is so very important. So Jesus said, now, Peter, won't you follow me because I want to put you in an environment where you can learn to fish for men, but I want to also position you with other disciples because iron shoppers iron. You following me? Are you following this? This is good. How do I realize and how do I release my potential? Number three, exposure. Exposure. Exposure is the condition of being affected by someone or something experienced that broadens your understanding and capabilities. I'm talking about exposure to a mentor a coach, someone who has experience, who can expand and, and give you new knowledge, new skill, new perspectives, new opportunities. My father in the faith, Dr. Fred Price, is now in heaven, but it was my exposure to him as, as a mentor, my exposure to him. I was given through him new knowledge. I saw in him new skills. I recognized a higher level of experience. And that exposure began to open up doors for me. It wasn't that he said, I want you to go here and uh, invite you. No, 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 no. When I say open up doors, I'm talking about the knowledge that I got from the mentor, the skill, the experience, the coaching. It became a part of me. And now I'm operating on another level and that will begin to open doors. Are you following me? Are you following me? So think about Jesus, about Peter. Think about the knowledge, the skill, the perspectives, the opportunities. Think about Peter and how he observed Jesus healing the sick and casting out devils and raising the dead. Wow, that was powerful just to be exposed to that. Powerful. 
In fact, you want to see how how uh, a, a good mentor uh, transmits something to you. If you read Acts chapter 9, remember Jesus raised people from the dead, raised a little girl from the dead over in Mark chapter 5. But if you read Acts 9 and see Peter raised that woman from the dead, he, he looked just like Jesus. He did some of the same things that Jesus did. Why? Because he was exposed to a whole nother level. Number four, the four P to realizing and releasing your potential is time, 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 time. You need time. You're not going to realize and release your potential overnight. It's going to take time. The Greeks in the New Testament had two words, or they understood time in two lights. There was chronos time and kairos time. Chronos time can be measured. Chronos time is specific amount of time, minutes and hours and days. Chronos time is day or night. God said to me years ago, a season of preparation is necessary. Chronos time. Peter had three and a half years. He had time to develop. He had time to grow. Will you say time? There are seasons in marriage, seasons in your career, seasons in ministry. We need time. And then there's Carol's time. It cannot be measured. It is only experience. Oh, you got you to gotta explain that to me. Uh, Carol's time is a special, unique, and significant moment in your life. Some people call it a destiny moment. Some people call it a moment of grace. Some people call it a divine opportunity. It's Carol's time. It is a moment in time that's orchestrated by God designed to usher you to another level and it requires prompt action. I was in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, I hadn't been in ministry very long, doing the best I can, teach, uh, preaching a revival, and the power of God was moving in that place. It was moving. But I was a rookie. I, I wasn't a veteran. I didn't know much about ministry. And a man came up to me, a preacher of a large church came up to me, and after that meeting, he said, you remind me of Fred Price. It was a Kairos moment. I didn't know anything about Fred Price. Who is that? He said, you remind me of him. It was a Kairos moment. It was a destiny moment. I didn't know him, but from that point on, I wanted to know who this guy was. Who was this Fred Price was that I looked like, that I was teaching like, and one day I saw him on television. I, yeah, yeah, that, that's it, that's it. And the Spirit of God let me know that I was to follow him. I was to follow him. He was within my mentor. He, it was a destiny moment. God orchestrates things to get us in the right place and to connect us to the right people. It's a destiny moment. It's time, but it's not measured in minutes and, and months. It, it is a, a unique occasion. That unique occasion in Tuscaloosa opened the door and ended up being a transformative experience for me. Time. And as we wrap this up, oh, I know you're getting blessed. There are five keys to realizing and releasing your potential. There's environment. Number two, there's position. There's exposure. Number three, number four, time. And number five, work. There must be a demand for potential to be released. And that's why Jesus gave his 12 disciples assignment. He would give them assignment. Because you're never going to walk in the anointing, the grace, the calling, the untapped potential until you have assignments, responsibilities. There has to be a demand on you. A demand. Back to my flashlight. Got a flashlight. Great encasement, 
got a a, a, a good bulb, got good batteries, they're positioned well, got a switch, and even though I have a good flashlight, that flashlight will never reach its potential until I make a demand. It's not till I get to a dark place. Night, I, I, night puts pressure on the flashlight. It's a demand on dark places put a, a, a demand on the flashlight. It, you're never going to reach your potential just reading, studying. At some point, you got to do something. You got to do something. And it begins small, and then God will begin to lead you. The Spirit of God will show you how to do this and show you how to do that. God wants you to reach your potential, full potential. And guess what? Guess what? You're going to do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 Mike, I got the tools. Yeah, yeah, you showed me the way. Thank you so very much. I got it, and I'm going to reach my full potential. Listen, I'm out of time, but listen, we're going to have a, a great time because I think you're going to walk with me. Now, be blessed. Go back. Listen again to what I taught today and begin to place it in your life. Look forward to seeing you next time. just finished a powerful teaching entitled, Are You Ready for More? It was about potential. Listen, remember this, you are more than you realize, and you can do more than you have done. Now, you can go to my website, mikemore.com forward slash blog, and you'll find more information about potential. Now, remember, the word of God is the answer, and I'm going to pray that you walk in the fullness of God's potential for your life. Go and grow now in Jesus' name. Thank you for watching Answers That Work with Mike Moore.